Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Sony DSC uh, H7. It was introduced in 2007, so it's 12 years old now. It was the successor to the DSC H2. Internally, it's almost the same as the H9, but the H7 doesn't have a tilting LCD. The LCD is a little bit smaller. And the H7 does not have night shot, the, the infrared shooting mode. It has Sony's super steady shot image stabilization. It's good for about one and a half stops, but beyond that, use a tripod. Uh, it shoots JPEGs, doesn't shoot TIFFs or RAW. It has a 8 megapixel, 1 over 2.5 inch type CCD. So a little rant aside here. It's time to get away from using the old video camera tube size way of describing image sensors. Uh, if you do the straight math, one over two and a half inches is 0.4 inches, or a little over 10 millimeters. But this thing is a little over seven millimeters. So really, it's kind of a sleazy way of making sensors seem larger than they are. Um, you know, I wish manufacturers would just give us the sensor dimensions or at least the diagonal. Okay, rant over. It uses the, turn it off here, uh, Memory Stick Pro or the Pro Duo. For a budget level bridge camera, it has a really nice lens. It's a Zeiss Vario Tessar. It's powered zoom, pretty standard. Uh, rocker control. has a 35 millimeter uh, equivalent zoom range of 31 to 465 millimeters. So for being this old, it has a pretty good reach. When the lens is at the widest, the widest aperture is f2.7. So it's nice and bright at wide. Uh, it stops down widest to f4.5 when you're at max zoom. Close focus uh, at wide setting is 50 centimeters, and then at max zoom, close focus is 120 centimeters. In macro mode, close focus is down to a centimeter. That close, you do get some barrel distortion in the images. Autofocus has a nine point uh, multi, nine area multi point, or you can set it to center or a flexible spot. It does spot focusing, but then there's different points on the screen that you can select. It also has a contrast detect. I have not actually used that mode and manual. It's nice to have manual focusing, but it's a little clunky in use because you know there's no dial. You got to use the controls. It has the usual assortment of modes, uh, manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, program auto exposure, and then nine different scene modes. And it's got, I think, four of the commonest scene modes actually up here on the selector dial. Uh, the shutter goes from 30 seconds to 1 4,000th of a second, uh, but you only get that full range in shutter priority or manual. Uh, the fastest and slowest shutter speeds varies with different modes. ISO is settable. Um, from 80 to 3200 or you can set it to auto. You can do bracketing settings or plus or minus 0 0.3, 0 0.7 or one stop. The electronic viewfinder uh, it's 201, 210,000 pixels, 201 I think. It's kind of small um, but for this vintage it's not bad and it's fairly clear. Um, it could use an eye cup though. In bright light though, it's hard to get your eyes squished up against your wall enough that you don't have ambient light kind of messing with it. The LCD suffers from the same thing. Uh, like a lot of the uh, older Sonys, you use a button to manually switch to L between the LCD and the viewfinder. It's a two and a half inch uh, LCD. It's 115,000 pixels. It's just okay. Um, it gets a little glary. It's really hard to see in bright sunlight. For the flash, they don't give a guide number, um, but when you're set to wide, 
Uh, they say it's good for 9.8 meters, about 32 feet, uh, and 6 meters, about 20 feet, uh, when you're at max zoom. And all of those ranges are given at auto ISO. When uh, it's sensing that it's pretty far away, to get the flash to work, it really bumps up the ISO, so images can kind of be noisy. Um, to cycle through, you know, it's got a flash button on the right of this rocker here. Red eye reduction, you got to go into the settings. But one nice surprise, you also have to go into the settings to do it. It's not available on the outside of the camera. It'll do rear curtain sync, um, which is great for moving things like at, especially at night, like if you've got a car coming by, normally the front curtain sink, it's going to flash and then the ambient light, you'll get the, the car's trail. It's kind of backwards from the way like a drawing of a moving car with the speed lines and things is. With the rear curtain sink, you get the ambient light portion of it, so you'll kind of get the streak lines and then it'll flash. So then you have the car with the blur kind of coming out behind it, which is, you know, what we intuitively expect. So that's a really nice feature, and it's a little bit surprising to find it on the budget level uh, camera like this. The I.O. on this thing is with what they call the multi-jack. With that, you get mono audio, uh, USB 2.0, and composite video. For HD, you need to get a separate cable than the stock one, but it doesn't give you HDMI, it's component. So that kind of gives you an idea of the vintage of this camera. The movies that this thing records are uh, 640 by 480, and in high res with a fast memory card, you get 30 frames a second. Otherwise, it's 16 frames per second. The movies that this records aren't as high res as the video that this thing can output. All of this is powered by yet another one of Sony's proprietary lithium-ion batteries. This one uses the, the BG-1. Controls on this guy are a little bit fiddly and you have to dive into the menu system for too many of them. The previous model had a wheel here for selecting. You didn't have to use this kind of game controller wheel on the back. Uh, the controller does have the usual functions uh, on these, the rocker portion of it, uh, it, kind of in between the OK button and the selector wheel. Um, the top display cycles how much info is on the screen at a time. So it kind of goes from nothing to a little bit to a lot to the live histogram, which thankfully Sony implemented early. I do love that feature. On the left just cycles between macro off and on. There's no OK or confirm or anything. I had a little trouble because I would be trying to use the control wheel and I kept entering macro mode accidentally just because the wheel's kind of small. Uh, the flash is on the right and that's the one that cycles through the regular settings, not the red eye or the rear uh, curtain sink. And then the bottom is a self timer, which cycles between 10 seconds, 2 seconds, and off. This originally shipped with a lens hood and a filter adapter. Like a lot of these, it's got threads in the zoom lens surround. Kind of summing up, like a lot of the older Sony's, the colors in this thing are wonderful. Uh, medium to high ISO is horribly noisy. And the built-in noise reduction, which in this model you cannot turn off, it's way too aggressive. And at high ISOs, the noise suppression algorithm is just, it turns your images to mush. So this is, does not excel in low light. So I wouldn't necessarily seek this out. I got this in a lot of cameras. One of those, ooh, I see something in the background I really, really want, so I'm going to buy all this other stuff to get that. If you get the cable and memory with it and you find one cheap, grab it. It's a really good snapshot camera. The memory stick in it um, had some photo. If you know the people or are the people, um, get a hold of me through the comments. This one is a lot of fun to shoot. The macro is really, really nice 
and I had fun shooting with it. So, you know, take everything I said with a grain of salt. It is what it is. It's a medium low end bridge camera that's 12 years old with a really stellar lens on it. So I'll keep dorking around with it and I'll see you then.